Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we will learn how to create a flashlight effect using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This flashlight follows the mouse cursor or the touch. That means it works both on desktop and touch devices. This is an excellent project for beginners as well as intermediates. So let's get started. But before starting this tutorial, I have some news for you. If you want to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap by building 300 plus projects, then you should buy this ebook. I have posted the link to this ebook in the video description below. So buy now. That being said, let us get started with the tutorial. We start with the HTML by creating a div with the ID flashlight followed by two P elements with the demo text lorem ipsum. Here is one of the P tag. Now let's create another one. The lorem ipsum text is just for demo. Now let us move on to CSS. We first begin with the asterisk selector, which targets all the elements on the page. It sets the padding and margin to zero to remove any space around the elements. The box sizing is set to border box to include the elements, border and padding into the elements total width and height. Font family is set to poppins and cursor is set to none, which effectively hides the default cursor from all the elements. Next. The P selector targets all the paragraph elements. It first sets the font size to 1EM which is the default font size of the browser. Text align justify justifies the text line height is set to 1.8EM and point, uh, padding is set to 0.2EM. Moving on we have the uh, hashtag flashlight selector which targets an element with the id of flashlight and applies the following styles the exposition is set to 50 vw this line of code sets a custom css variable called exposition to 50 vw the vw unit represents a percentage of viewport width now y position represents the y pos variable which is set to 50 vh the flashlight before selector targets the pseudo element before of the element with the id flashlight and applies the following styles the content is set to blank display is set to block width is set to 100 percent of its parents element height is set to pseudo elements 100 percent of the parent element position is set to absolute and background is set to a radial gradient. This radial gradient is transparent at the position specified by XPOS and YPOS variables at the center and gradually becomes opaque black towards the edges. This creates a flashlight like effect that is transparent in the center while dark towards the edges. So I realized I have misspelled circle. So let me go and correct the spelling of circle. And that's it. The gradient is now working. As you can see it is transparent in the center and it goes on uh, becoming opaque towards the edges finally we apply media queries which sets the font size of the body to 14 px when the maximum height sorry the maximum width of the viewport is 500 px Now let us move on to the javascript code. Include this line into your html code. 
the JavaScript code snippet begins by declaring three variables mouse x, mouse y, and flashlight. Mouse x and mouse y are initialized to 0 and will be used to store the current position of mouse or touch event. Flashlight is assigned the element with the id flashlight using get element by id method this allows us to interact with the flashlight element in the html next we have a function called is touch device this function checks whether the device supports touch events it does so by attend attempting to create a touch event using the create event method if the creation of touch event fails it means the device doesn't support touch events and the function returns false otherwise it returns true Moving on, we have the get mouse position function. This function is responsible for updating the mouse x and mouse y variables with the current position of mouse or touch event. The function takes an event object E as parameter which represents the mouse move or a touch move event. Inside the function, it first checks whether the device is a touch device by calling is touch device function. If it returns true, it means it's a touch device. Otherwise, it's a desktop or non-touch device. Depending on the device type, the mouse X and mouse Y variables are set to either page X and page Y properties of the mouse event or the page X and page Y properties of the first touch event. After updating the mouse X and mouse Y variables, the function sets the custom CSS properties X pos and Y pos of the flashlight element using the set property method. Now let us set this this for variables. Now these properties define the position of flashlight effect on the page based on the current mouse or touch position. Finally, we add event listeners document dot add event listener mouse move get mouse position which adds an event listener for the mouse move event. Whenever the mouse is moved, the get mouse position function is called to update the po position of the flashlight effect. Next, we have the touch move get position ev event listener which adds an event listener for the touch move event. On touch devices, whenever a touch movement occurs, the get mouse position function is called to update the position of the flashlight effect. So when you run this code on your on the web page, the flashlight effect will follow the mouse cursor on desktop devices or the touch position on touch devices, creating an interactive and engaging experience for the users. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.